Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, welcome to Catalog Friday. It, it has been a long time since uh, Dave and I have been allowed to be back together again um, due to due to many reasons, I guess, uh, most of them being involving good taste. Mm -hmm. um, so mostly taste. mostly taste. And loss of smell as well. But uh, we, are, we are properly socially distanced here uh, about eight feet apart from each other uh, in the in Lionel headquarters. Just good to be able to start getting back into the office at least again. Uh, and we've missed you all uh, and uh, the, your comments and fun. Um, so obviously today's the big day, Dave. We've got the, the new catalog out. Hello. And as always, this time of year, we try and uh, spend a little bit of time with you going through the catalog page by page, uh, update you on everything that's inside there, as well as just give you some, uh, some more background and talk about some things that uh, you may not know from the catalog or that we need to clear up from the catalog. Uh, so we'll be doing uh, a lot of that. Uh, because of the amount of information we have to cover, I mean, this thing's a pretty good sized thick book. Uh, we're not going to, we're not going to take uh, questions during the show, at least not, not answering them live. Uh, however, whether you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, please uh, do ask questions in the comments section and uh, we will make Sadie answer them all later. So um, with that, Dave, should we go ahead and, and get started? Hopefully everyone can hear us and the audio is coming through fine. I'm sure if we're not, uh, you'll let us know that as well. And this is our first time using this new uh, streaming software. And while uh, we're definitely going to miss the lower quality video that we had before, it is nice that you can now see much more highly detailed Ryan and Dave faces. That's right. We've got like spotlights on us and uh, all amazing. sorts of things. It make, it really brings out the extra gray I in my hair. I did powder this morning. I noticed. Yeah. I noticed. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get started. Uh, before we get into all the, the fun uh, individual locomotives and pieces of rolling stock, there's, there's two big announcements that, that are hitting in this catalog mm -hmm. in terms of new features that you'll see uh, widely across the line. Uh, the first of these is LVC, and that is Lionel Voice Control. Voice Control. So Dave figured out a way to control trains with just your voice commands. Next, we're going to work on finding a way to control Dave with just voice commands. Never going to work. But the, uh, the train control feature works a lot better than, than the, the Dave control feature it at does. this point. So uh, this is live now. And so some, some great things about this. First of all, what is it? Lionel Voice Control is a new control method. It uses the Lion Chief app, which uh, many of you are probably already familiar with. Uh, it's been out for several years now. Uh, it's available on Apple phones, Android phones, and so forth. Uh, if you've already got the app, just run the update, and this feature is already available. If you haven't downloaded yet, this is your, your a great opportunity to, to do that. Uh, and what you'll do is you'll press the little... Um, orange button up there in the top corner uh, that uh, looks like a, a Dave shouting at you. And if you press that button, it'll prompt you for a voice command. You can tell the, the locomotive what you'd like it to do. Uh, go forward, go faster, slow down, stop, blow the whistle. Shut up. Uh, shut up. We'll actually silent all the all this, the sounds. Uh, and it'll respond to those commands. So it's it's hands-free or virtually hands-free operation of your of your, of your model train. An icon doesn't look like me. There's not enough beer. That's true. Um, so great thing about, about this is it's, a, it's available right now. Um, it is free. This is part of the free Lion Chief app. And uh, it is back datable. So anything that we have that has Bluetooth on board, any Lion Chief locomotive, Flyer Chief, Plus. Uh, Lion Chief Plus, Legacy. Lion Chief Plus 2.0, Legacy, HO. If it's got the little Bluetooth bug on it, this feature will now be activated because it all goes through the app. So just update the newest version of the Lion Chief app, and you've got this, this feature. So you don't have to wait for any of these things to deliver uh, this year to, to try this out. You can go ahead and, and try this on one of your existing Bluetooth-equipped locomotives or train sets right now. So you just go on to the Play Store or the App Store, download the update. It should only take a couple of minutes. Uh, those updates did go live earlier this week. The Android, I think, on Tuesday, and the iOS on Wednesday. So see those app stores to, to download the latest version. Mm -hmm. Now there are 
when you go in and you press the voice streaming command, um, if you want to see a list of commands that are available, just say help or assistance. And on the Line Chief app screen, will pop up a list of commands that you can use. Now, I will say that the list of commands will be long, but it's also pared down a bit. We have a lot of hidden Easter eggs in the voice command app that will activate sequences or different sounds and whatnot. So it gives an extra level of playability when you're using voice control. So try different things such as coming into the station and see what it does. It, it allows you to play. Mm -hmm. um, and Dave will be doing a more in-depth look at this on the next demos with Dave, which will be a week from Monday at six o'clock. Yeah, I have no idea what that date is. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's not Monday, it's a week out. A week so Monday, like 10 days from now. Mm -hmm. So look forward to, to that. Uh, the next feature that we have that's new, and we'll, we can talk about this a little bit more when we get to the train sets that include it, is LRC, uh, or, or sorry, VSR. Uh, we've got, yeah, VSR. Uh, voice streaming and recording. Uh, and this allows you to do live streaming or record your own voice uh, and then play it back through the locomotive as crew talk. So for those of you who don't like Lionel crew talk for some reason, uh, we have an option for There's you now. people that don't like I know. I, 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 I've heard one or two. Yeah. Uh, you can record your own sayings and then, then play them back through the locomotive. And that's a, a new feature that we'll have in some of our sets this year. Uh, that is, is included with a lot of other uh, hardware upgrades that are happening in our Bluetooth line. And we'll, we'll hit those a little bit more uh, down, down the track here. Yeah, I want to tell you a bit more about that. And let's do that when we get the first set that includes it. Sounds good. All right. It will so sound good. It will sound good. All right. Let's get rolling here. We've got a lot of ground to cover. So let's start off as we usually do with the uh, O scale products, yes. our high end things. Uh, we've got our features laid it out there as normal. Uh, you will notice a few new standard legacy features that we're starting to incorporate now, like the voice control and Bluetooth, but also things like bicolor marker lights on our steam locomotives. If that, you uh, look at the catalog online and you go to the features page, uh, which has the last year's Vision Line GS. Um, there will be four buttons up here at the top that do link to short videos that show the features such as the bicolor markers and the five different whistles and the pitchable uh, bell as well. So make sure you can check those out to have a, a, an actual view of what these new features look like. Sorry, Ryan, didn't mean to cut you out there. No, good, good point for bringing that out. We've been doing a lot lately to try and enhance our digital catalogs and digital footprint so that we can bring these products to life in new and better ways that uh, the, the print catalog just uh, can't quite grab. Yeah. Uh, speaking of projects that have a lot of features, the Vision 2 10 10 2s are back. Ooh, boy. Uh, this is a really exciting locomotive. Hey. One of the first Vision locomotives that Lionel did, what, about 2010, I believe, on these? I, I know I was that. still in college when this engine came out last time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so these look much back with all those same features plus a few new goodies added in. Uh, feature rich engine includes, of course, stack smoke, whistle smoke, blowdown smoke, the swinging bell feature that we always get requests for. Uh, and now updated with the latest electronics with legacy, Bluetooth, voice control, uh, the bicolor LEDs, our oh, latest. Whistles. Yep, five whistles, five bells that you can choose from on here. Literally all the bells and whistles. All the bells and whistles. Fun times. Uh, and four different deco variations uh, on this locomotive. There were uh, only a, a handful of these built. I want to say it was maybe about uh, nine or ten of these that they built. Yeah. And they were uh, built out of the two ten twos, right? Mm -hmm. They took two ten two two ten twos and <laughs> uh, tied them together and made one massively uh, big but not successful locomotive. <laughs> Uh, so they didn't last very long, and then they split them back up into two ten twos again. Uh, but while they were, were married together, these were the largest locomotives uh, in the world for, for their time. And uh, very neat locomotives. So we've done two versions that are in appropriate prototypical dress. Uh, the first one you see there will have uh, black uh, wheels and darkened side rods for more of an in-service freight look. And then we also have one done up with white rimmed uh, wheels and polished rods for a fresh out the shops uh, look. That locomotive is also the one that was in a silent film. So you can you can still go on um, on YouTube and find that and, and watch the movie and see these things in action, which is kind of cool. Those are kind of films we should be in. Silent films, yeah. yeah. But then we wouldn't have all these great voice control and, and rail sounds features to talk about. 
Uh, also, two of our, our fantasy schemes here uh, on this locomotive, uh, because uh, honestly, these do very well for us in the company. We know you, you guys, a lot of you out there do like these, uh, and they've done well. So we've got a black bonnet, uh, which is a glossier paint, and then the uh, red cab, yellow striping, and the war bonnet uh, on the tender. Uh, been a very popular sort of niche um, paint scheme for us for, for a number of years now. That one's going to look so sharp. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then the Valley Flyer inspired version as well up there at the top of the page. And we'll, we'll hit the Valley Flyer a little bit more in a couple more pages. But uh, this has some silver and yellow and, and red accents on it and a, a really nice piece. Neither of these uh, uh, fantasy schemes is too over the top in terms of flashiness or gaudiness, but uh, a nice nod to the Santa Fe and, and different things that they had. Now, I, I will say, I don't know, the question has popped up that uh, in, in the text, there is reference to safety valve smoke, and these will not have those. Originally, when redesigning this engine, the goal was to have whistle blows down and safety valve smoke, but the safety valve smoke physically couldn't fit simply because of its proximity to where the whistle steam is as well as where the motor is in the back of this engine, uh, basically in the firebox area. There was no way to pipe that smoke in. Um, so we had to remove it from the features, and, and there might be a couple errors here and there to still call it out. but. Uh, no, this engine will have three smoke units, the stack, stack smoke, whistle smoke, and blow down smoke. It's interesting, this look, when you think 21010 10, you've got to have all sorts of room inside that. But the no, tiny boiler. boiler is so thin on this, it's no wonder the engine itself didn't didn't work very well. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, it was even a challenge when we were turning this into having dual sound systems. Uh, it was even a challenge to get the 40 millimeter speaker in the engine simply because of how narrow that old boiler is. Mm -hmm. So that's another improvement that was made over the previous run then as well that right. uh, we, we sort of missed over is that you will have that that stereo sound with the three speakers, which is really cool, with especially with all the new whistle options that it's we have. It's been standard on our vision engines and even some of our articulators lately mm -hmm. to have the dual sound systems that really give kind of a Doppler effect to, to the sound system as well as playing the appropriate sounds out of the appropriate location. All right. Next up, we've got some USRA Pacifics. We've actually got a lot of Pacifics in this catalog. There's some very specific Pacifics. Specific Pacifics, yes. Uh, every railroad had these locomotives or some variation therein. So uh, we've, we've hit a few more uh, varieties this go around uh, and done some customization on these models in terms of smaller details, but also things like trailing trucks and tenders uh, to give it a more family appearance uh, wherever we could. And so no matter what part of the country you, you model, you can you can certainly use one of these Pacifics. And we've got a few in, in special sets too. But uh, here on the on the page, we've got Atlantic Coastline, uh, Great Northern. We are darkening the green on the Great Northern boilers this year, for those who've been asking. What is the actual green referred to on the Great Northern? Is that a glacier green? Yeah, that's yeah. right, glacier green. Uh, so we've darkened that up uh, on, on here. Uh, the nickel plate, very cool. It's one of, I think, two engines that they had, two Pacifics they had that had the uh, by War Bonds tender paint scheme applied uh, in the 40s. So a, a nice splash of color on those would look great hauling a, a troop train or passenger train. Uh, and then the Union Pacific and Southern Pacific versions with the Vandy tenders, uh, a nice variation there as well. Two more for the GMNO and the MKT. Uh, we've got some matching passenger cars that will go along with these two as well. You'll see the uh, the Texas Special uh, inspired heavyweights here on this page that would pair up nice with the MKT unit. There's also a matching PA diesel uh, pair further back in the catalog for each of these uh, as well. Um, the heavyweight cars feature our new uh, printed on uh, faux streamlining, uh, which is just like the, the prototype. These were painted with a shadow line pattern to mimic the stainless steel cars. So as the railroad needed to expand its operations and its premier services, but didn't have the money to go out and buy new uh, lightweight cars right away. They they doctored up the old ones to look like they were painted and this way, or looked like they were stainless steel, and blended them in with the the concept. So a neat, a neat uh, sort of fake paint scheme, but one that's very prototypical. I think it looks very sharp, mm -hmm. and I also love the red on the GM and L engine. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Very nice. And then we do have the station sound diners throughout the catalog as mm -hmm. well too. And uh, the station sound diners all come with the customized um, train name in them and provide a lot of fun. And I did do a, a Demos with Dave episode uh, a couple months back on station sound diners if you want to go watch that and see all the different features these cars have to offer. 
Next up, we have our Camelbacks. Uh, this is a, a great value in a smaller legacy steam locomotive. Uh, a lot of features packed into this engine. It'll do nicely on smaller and medium-sized layouts. Sure. Uh, we've, we've blasted this as a Lion Chief Plus locomotive uh, about maybe three years ago, four years ago now. It was before we entered in the Bluetooth. I think it was even longer than that, yeah. maybe. Um, and here for not, uh, not a much heavier price tag, we've gone with full legacy, uh, also added in whistle steam. Uh, and Bluetooth control. So a, a great uh, locomotive, a uh, variety of decoration, decorated schemes here, including some which are uh, pretty prototypical for Camelbacks and others which are a little bit more fanciful, mm -hmm. uh, like our, our Halloween engine. Uh, Dave, I'm sure you... Fanciful? Yeah, well, with the, the like, that's just great for the, the sounds that you guys put in those all the time. It is, but I thought that was prototypical. That's prototypically awesome. Next, you're going to tell me there's no sound. Sorry, Dave. Uh, the uh, the Blue Comet uh, 460 there is uh, another sort of fanciful but, but possible um, yeah. fantasy scheme, very neat. And uh, I think one of my favorites is the Strasbourg uh, Camelback. You know, it's, it's sort of our idea of uh, what they may have done if a uh, C&J Camelback had still been available instead of just the old uh, Reading 040. So uh, a little bit of a beefed up version based on, on Strasbourg number four, uh, but a, a pretty neat looking locomotive uh, and of course lots of prototypical uh, paint schemes this here, was so. a this was a good uh this was a good edit um compared to the santa fe 210 10 2 this one had the opposite effect of where it's a small engine but a very wide boyard so that's how we were able to fit in the whistle steam um, so a small engine but packed full of features like ryan said with Whistle steam, regular smoke, bicolor markers, uh, track IR, uh, wireless draw bar, all of the, the fun stuff on a regular legacy full featured engine. Um, so really friendly to smaller layouts. Yeah, I was wasn't thinking for sure we'd get whistle steam in this when we started, but uh, it was it was able to squeeze in there somehow. We get the thing. Uh, so just about everything steam locomotive wise in here does have all these full features. I think the only one that doesn't is the John Bull, which pretty obvious why not mm. uh, but we'll get to that in a little bit uh, next up we have the l2a mohawk uh, this is the first time this locomotive has been back with whistle steam for sure uh, the last time we released this uh, we hadn't gotten to that stage in development on the, on the locomotives yet uh, so an engine that has been requested for for several times over a uh, lot of detail on this locomotive it's you know, a lot of uh, extra extra applied detail parts um, from compressors and piping and so forth that stand off on the boiler which uh, is, is part of why it looks, I think, so so nice. We've done a couple of different prototypical variations of the New York Central lettering um, on here. There will be a weathered version as well uh, that we will uh, ship directly to Harry Heike when they arrive, and then he'll do the weathering, and we'll get them back and ship one out. He always does a great job of weathering. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got two fantasy schemes here as well, one in the uh, two-tone gray, similar to the uh, Niagara that we did uh, a few years back. And then the pacemaker scheme, which which would be a really great match with the pacemaker uh, freight set that we have here. Uh, but we did want to do those all together in a set because we thought you might want a prototypical locomotive with with that nice uh, expansion set of cars. So we we kept them separate. Uh, the freight set includes one of our new Vision box cars, which we can talk about a little bit more as we get down some of the great features in that. A lot of sound features. Mm -hmm. uh, four extra regular uh, PS1 box cars in the caboose. So match this up with some of the other pacemaker cars that we've done in the past or others have done and you can put together a really nice long string of of these cars which is pretty cool hey ryan is it the uh 2790 on here that's the weathered version i believe so yes great yeah that's the one there on the left side of the page at the bottom mm -hmm. and we've also got a new haven uh, version in there as well they had some some virtual copies of these locomotives that, Very uh, cool. all right Let's head on into diesels. Yep, again, there's a couple of videos on that diesel spread there that mm -hmm. Ryan blew right past because he does. Okay, yeah, so let's talk, talk about, talk about uh, <laughs> all of your accomplishments, Dave. We, we... I have no, these are my, my friend's accomplishments. We've all worked together mm -hmm. hard, and I really just don't do any of these. I'm really good at twiddling my thumbs. I've heard that. I know. So yeah, let's move on to diesels. Okay, uh, SD70 Aces, uh, always a popular locomotive. Mm -hmm. We've got one prototype paint scheme in here. That's the Kansas City Southern uh, Heroes unit uh, pictured there. 
uh, towards the center of the spread. And then the others of these are all fantasy heritage schemes. Um, and the inspiration for these were all the other heritage locomotives that are out there. These are some roads that uh, have either been overlooked or underlooked, and we wanted to, to create some different classic paint schemes on these modern engines. Uh, so you've got uh, a whole whole great variety here. I haven't decided which one's my favorite yet, but that, that Boston Maine is off the wall. It is honest. it is pretty cool. Yeah. It is pretty cool. It's definitely up there on the list. Uh, so these have all the same features that you've come to expect in these locomotives, um, including as Dave mentioned earlier, five different horns um, in here now that you can you can flip back and forth and select in Legacy. PA, AA sets, uh, some more uh, great classic engines. We're not doing the B units this time, but just uh, paired A units, both units powered. Uh, both units, of course, your smoke and lights and all of that good stuff. And the lead unit has sound. It has sound. Um, we've got a, an MKT unit here, which would match those heavyweight cars or the earlier uh, runs that we've done of, of streamlined passenger cars. Uh, New Haven and Cotton Belt. We've got a next page over some Delaware and Hudson's. These are probably some of the most famous of the PAs uh, out there. Yeah. And uh, one that we haven't run in Legacy, I think, since the very beginning uh, of Legacy. Oh, wow. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. And so these will have a, a foam metal finish uh, on the sides as well to give them a little extra shine. Uh, and we've got some a great uh, assortment there of matching 21-inch passenger cars to go with them. So four-pack, two-pack, and station sound Steiner. And these cars, these trains were running uh, into the Amtrak era, so they were really around uh, later on and, and had a nice long life and uh, drew a lot of attention with their the reuse of the old equipment like that. But we, just to clarify, Ryan, we won't be offering the B units on the engines this time around. That is correct. That is correct. The road names that we that we chose actually didn't have a prototypical B unit. So uh, there was no prototype reason to offer them. And we decided uh, because of typically when we do that, we don't see a high number of sales. Right. So we held off on the B units. And another set here, we've got the Erie Lackawannas. Uh, this will be the Phoebe Snow passenger train. Again, four-pack, two-pack, station sound Steiner, and another uh, great pair of PA, uh, PA2 diesels, PA1s. PA1s and FA2s, that's what we have. Uh, and GM&O. I just want to think we're, we're finished. I, there's another skew always <laughs> around the corner. No wonder you guys uh, hate me so much when it comes time to do code work. Oh, good Lord. It takes forever. <laughs> Here we've got the, the GMNO uh, PAs. Uh, we've got what will be the sound car, and this will be the, the midnight special. Uh, we've got uh, the 18 inch cars here, like we saw earlier. And of course, these cars would work just as well with that Pacific we saw way back in the steam section, what feels like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Is it really, does time drag like that, Ryan, when you're. You're, you're spending time with me. Is no, that no, I just feel like Is I'm. Is that what you're saying? I just feel like I'm carrying the whole conversation. Maybe I'll let you talk about this next one. No, go ahead. <laughs> All right, we got GP30s. Uh, this is a, a, a classic engine from the 1960s through the the 2000s, and we've got a variety of paint schemes. Right. Dave, I love that you show the catalog. You know, we have it up on the big screen right now, ten times larger than than us. I'm actually just looking at the back. Okay. I know you like the Acela. We're getting it. You need to accelerate this conversation. <laughs> so we've got some great new paint schemes on the GP30 this time around, uh, including some of our, our patched jobs, uh, a pair for BNSF in Santa Fe and Burlington Northern, uh, and then a pair for CSX in the Chessie system and B&O. And uh, the Chessie and B&O engines lasted well into the 1990s. The BNSF um, patch schemes or heritage schemes, I guess, if you want to call them that, uh, some of those lasted into the, the 2000s. There may even be a few of them floating around out there still today. So uh, for those who modern model, modern the modern, model the modern era. Uh, <laughs> and you want to know why I didn't talk. Yeah. Imagine uh, I tried to say that. Uh, this is a great way to have some throwback paint schemes on your layout uh, and still be up with the times. Uh, we've also got a cool pair of Reading and Northerns down there in the, in the corner, which uh, have that uh, throwback to the old Reading paint scheme, which I, I kind of like. I think those are... But pretty much all of these were prototypical paint schemes, right? Yes. No, uh, didn't didn't go too fantasy crazy on these. These are all prototype paints. Didn't not need to. I mean, there's enough color here in real life. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so many different options on these. It'll be a while till we have to resort to heritage schemes on these. <laughs> oh, I'm excited for this one. Can I talk now? You may talk. You can I take can this talk. one away. This is one of your pet projects. There's so much engineering in this. Oh, that's right. The catalog's still up there. 
You picked some great paint, though. I mean, there's a shark down there, right? It, it, it's not a tornado, but it's a shark at least. Mm -hmm. But anyways, the Veranda Turbine, UP Veranda Turbine. We have not run this engine since I think I was in ninth grade. I don't know, around in there. Back when you were just signing up for AARP? Pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of faint, fake paint schemes here, right? A lot of fantasy paint schemes. A lot of, uh, oh, that never existed. Great thing is some of them look so cool. And you can run them on your railroad if you want, right? And if you don't like them, Ryan. Buy the Union Pacific versions. Bam! So... Uh, like myself, I'm probably going to get that SP, even though they never had a brand turbine. That thing just looks like it belongs. Yeah, what we tried to do, uh, for the most part here with our, our, our fantasy schemes, uh, was to take the locomotive concept and put it on other railroads that may have had some similar success, uh, or had the, the turbines been probably a greater success, maybe tried the, these features out a little bit more. Uh, you know, when you think uh, a locomotive that makes a ton of noise and burns a ton of... Uh, Fuel oil. Fuel oil. You know, the Alaska Railroad might be a good home for something like exactly. that. So it sort of made sense to us that they might try. Or the it. army. Or the army, right? <laughs> uh, this thing would look just. This thing's just going to look really cool pulling along a uh, troop train full of uh, armored vehicles and things like that. Exactly. Uh, so we we wanted to pick a few paint schemes that were um, plausible. Uh, had this locomotive had some some more success, but we do have two variations of the Union Pacific paint scheme that are correct. The only real difference. Uh, on those first two there is the size of the lettering on the tender, because that's about the only thing that changed on them over their, their actual service lives. We did do a Greyhound and a contemporary scheme with the American flag as well. Uh, sort of a, maybe one had been set aside for preservation in their heritage fleet type of, uh, uh, of operation, what it might look like uh, still out there roaming the rails today. But enough about what's on the outside of these, Dave. I think what a lot of people want to know is what all they do inside and what makes these such such cool locomotives. Yeah, they got wires and stuff. Is that good? Uh, could you elaborate? Oh, okay. So we did a lot of re-engineering with this thing, um, literally from the ground up. Uh, there were a lot of truck issues, motor issues with the last version. I mean, they still ran well. But we updated the gearboxes in these um, and updated to modern mo motors as well. So you're going to get very reliable performance out of the trucks, um, all die cast trucks, all metal gears. Um, so that's going to be one huge improvement right off the bat. And then obviously you have the new ele uh, legacy electronics up in the engine um, that give you the new legacy sound system, as well as you know what we've talked about here repeatedly with the five <laughs> horns, five bells. Um, but we also have two smoke units in this guy because these engines in real life did have a helper engine, right? Yes. Right? It was a, a small diesel engine mm -hmm. that helped them get moving and helped them move at slow speeds, right, Ryan? Correct. And then you had the turbine that kicked in. Also, if you were in yards or um, closer to urban areas, they would often cut that, that turbine off for, for noise. Yeah. And I've also read where if they were coming downhill, they would cut the turbine off because it was such a fuel guzzler that if you could coast for a while, even though it took a while to restart it, it was still worth shutting that thing off uh, and saving fuel for a little little while. So. We have that all worked into the electronics and the code on this too. The smoke units come on and off with the different sound units. Uh, and a lot of that is triggered also by your different speed steps on your legacy cab. Uh, it's a die cast locomotive. Correct, so we did not change that. It's been die cast the whole time. Mm -hmm. It is going to be a heavy beast. Uh, die cast tender, but one cool thing we've done with the tender this time too is we're putting a super bass speaker in there. You didn't tell me that. Yeah, I did, I told you that. It's right there in the catalog. Oh, that's what you meant by when you said it's all about the bass. Yes, that's, oh. and that's why I thought you meant when you said it would be no trouble. So <sighs> that's why we've got it. So this yeah, has the does. this has uh, a super bass sound system in the tender, which is really cool because yes. there's one thing these locomotives were known for, it was that they were loud. And we like want us. like us, loud and obnoxious, and not to be seen around other people. That's the perfect. This is our. This is our mascot. And put out a lot of gas. Yeah, cool. We found our. We found our spirit engines. <laughs> so this these locomotives are very feature rich, really cool engines. All sorts of uh, bells and whistles and sounds and smoke uh, features in here. Uh, they are dual motor. Uh, some people had asked earlier. I think of these would be dual or four motors. Dual motor will actually give you plenty of. Uh, Pulling capacity on these, and uh, look forward to seeing these back up uh, in the lineup. They've been been going for a long time. 
And there's no sort of tether or anything. We actually have regular couplers in between the engine and the tender mm -hmm. and all KD compatible as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to throw uh, scale couplers on there. So the tender itself is much like our super base B units and that it has its own set of legacy electronics. And then you just program it under the same TMC CID number as the engine or under Bluetooth, the uh, tender will act as the slave and the engine is the master. So really easy to operate, um, really fun to run. Mm -hmm. All right, so from the beast to something a little bit uh, more refined here, a little, little smaller. It's a beast. <laughs> We've got our, our new SW8s. This is a new tooling variation uh, based on our NW2, SW7, SW1200 series. Uh, this is the single stack version, uh, actually replicates three different uh, prototype models that all shared the same car body, uh, including the SW900, uh, the SW600 was the, the, the third, uh, but most of these are, are SW8s. Uh, a variety of prototypical paint schemes here, uh, including our licensed uh, cores unit, which uh, can be found out there switching the, the beer cars in Golden, and we've got some beer cars uh, down the tracks for these that are newly tooled cars from last year. Uh, some other, some great prototype uh, paint schemes on here uh, and some detail variations from unit to unit as we've been doing with all of our new uh, diesel locomotives, uh, including the, the separate number boards on the B&M and Southern Pacific uh, variations, different horns. Uh, in some cases here, we also have different walkway handrail arrangements, uh, all based on the prototype and, and prototype photos that, that we have. Uh, these are single motor uh, locomotives. But they are torque monsters. Yes. That's the great thing about these little switchers in code. We do set them to run as switchers, which means they do run at a slower speed, but they're mm -hmm. also geared very high. So the engine um, spins up at, at you know high speeds, which provides a lot of torque to the wheels, kind of like a, a CAS scenic railroad engine or something like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also fixed pilots on these engines too, right. uh, which and, is a, a great thing. And scale coupler compatibility. Mm -hmm. All right, Dave, your next engineering nightmare. I was not kind to the engineering department in this product selection at so, all. See all this gray hair? I started naming them Kunkel 1, Kunkel 2. Man, the Acela. It has been a while, huh? It has been a while. It's been um, a minute. I think mean, we, we made this engine last when it first came out, and now the poor thing's going away. Yep, we figured uh, with the, the prototypes about to be phased out, it was time for another another run and a salute to these locomotives. Uh, as we've looked into this project, you know, the, honestly, the Acela, original Acela model was developed before both of our, our time with the company here. And it is amazing uh, what the designers were able to pack into uh, a, a relatively small uh, train model. I mean, just look at all the, all the bright details. They're just, just insane. Mm -hmm. uh, so beautiful models with a lot of really cool features. But what we have heard over and over again is that it's one of the most amazing trains that Lionel ever produced when you can actually get it to work. So we decided that what we were going to do for this round is make uh, it work, make it work uh, but also simplify a few things so that you would have a version of the train that you could get out, put on your layout, run, enjoy, get a, a lot of, of fun features still out of it uh, and have a great time. And, and then to send it back to us six times. And not send it back to us <laughs> with, or uh, heaven forbid someone had to take it apart to try and work on it uh, and you would be lucky to ever get it back together again. Just um, in prototyping this new version and putting the new electronics in, and just especially the cars themselves, taking them apart, not breaking the pieces, holy cow. So, Updating these to the new electronics, uh, removing some of the difficult features where needed, but also adding in some fun new features as well. It's been a really good project, and I'm glad Ryan forced me to do it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, when, when you opened up a passenger car and said there's five motors inside this passenger car, I, I didn't really quite know what to say. <laughs> um, but uh, we did ch change a few things on here. Uh, there's also a lot of things that we left the same or some other things that we sort of added in. So I guess we start with the locomotives uh, at each end of the train or the power cars. Both of them will be powered. Both of them have sound. The panographs are still uh, automatic operation. Uh, you'll have legacy control. You'll have Bluetooth control. Uh, so all the, the bells and whistles, we are making some improvements on the trucks uh, and the side frames so that they're easier to uh, remove for maintenance and, and so forth. 
I mean, I gave up trying to put traction tires on this thing. I would have had to have tore the motors or the truck assemblies all the way down. I just can't imagine it. We're retooling all that. Mm -hmm. That's just crazy. Yep. So, <laughs> a lot of really good. I mean, the engineering that went behind the original on this model was insane was and solid. impressive. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I cannot put down the designers of yesterday for such an impressive model. Yep. But there's room for improvement, like always. So that's where we're at. Yep. On the passenger cars uh, is where we, we simplify things a little bit more. Uh, the, the two things that we took out are the powered doors. Uh, the doors will still open and close manually. Uh, and then the IR tether that ran between all of the, the cars. And the tilting mechanism. Right, and, the, and then also the and tilting mechanism. With a power so. tilting mechanism. Mm -hmm. So that's where, if you read the catalog, it does say that we're putting in the passive tilting mechanism. Basically, that's going to be a mechanical tilting mechanism built in the bolsters of these trucks on the passenger cars. So as the truck turns, you know, you're going around the corner, it's basically going to be a mechanical ramp in there that causes the passenger car to tilt slightly. And then when it comes back straight, it'll come back up to, to the normal upright position. So <clears throat> while the electronic part move, has been removed, it'll still tilt in the corners yes. like you would expect yeah. it to. Yeah, the visual impact will, will not change at all from the original engine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that the cars will do it naturally instead of uh, a motor being driven through a, a mini processor to determine the rate of tilt based off of speed and curvature and all sorts of some things happening. You got uh, that done pretty it. good. I'm impressed. Yeah, I, well, I was impressed with the way it, it was done. You know, all the all the thought that went into making a car go. Uh, <laughs> uh, but when we say that, you know, these are features that we could simplify without really changing the overall look and feel and value on your layout, that's that's what we mean. We've also improved the cars with LED flicker-free lighting, which will be a nice improvement over the bulbs um, in the originals. The engines as well. Mm -hmm. And we'll have LED lighting. But you'll still have, and we have a station sounds dining car in the, the bistro car in the add-on pack. So you still have additional uh, rail sounds in there as well. So lots, still a very feature rich set. We're doing them as a, a powered set with the two power cars and three passenger cars, and then the three car add-on set, including the station sounds car. So you can do a prototypical six car train. Um, if you have one of the originals, you've still got one of the most amazing uh, engineering achievements this company has ever produced. and. Uh, and definitely hang on to it and love it and enjoy it. Uh, they should retain their value nicely with this new release coming out. Uh, if you've always wanted an Acela or always wanted an Acela and just were afraid of all of the headaches that came with it, uh, this is a great opportunity to add one to your roster that still delivers a lot of bang for your buck um, and uh, should operate very reliably for you uh, for, for years and years. Can I talk about a couple more? Things? Sure, absolutely. There's so much in these things, right? Mm -hmm. So you did mention that both units are now powered, which is an improvement over the original. As the original only had one unit powered, so now you're going to have four motors pushing this thing along. We want it to go fast. Right? It needs to. Mm -hmm. But we also have dual sounds in them now as well. So your trailing unit is also going to have a sound unit. And if anybody's followed along with what we did in the past with the F40 PH cabbage units, Mm -hmm. or even more recently the cab cars for the long island railroad mm -hmm. um, we did what we call the unit pair because they do have the unit pair switch on them so when activated and you're running your cella whichever engine is the one going forward is the one where your crew talk uh, horn and bell will come from so that way it's more of a prototypical end to end point train mm -hmm. operation and your pantographs will go up and down accordingly as well correct and you will have the option to do um, the pantographs automatically um, mm -hmm. so that your front pantograph on each unit will always be down, your rear will be up. Plus, there's also manual switches on the engines under the hatch for locking them down, locking them up, or just turning them off completely, um, which is always a good thing to do if your layout has bridges, tunnels, tunnels <laughs> cats, obstacles, cats, definitely cats. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that's going to be great. But you also will be able to use buttons on the legacy remotes to manually um, push those pantographs up and down. So it'd be great. Really cool, uh, really cool trains. I'm glad that we're, we're bringing these back uh, and, and seeing them again. We've got a, a whole bunch of, of different paint schemes. Uh, here on the page we're looking at now, we've got the, the current official uh, Amtrak paint uh, as they are today. Uh, we worked back and forth with Amtrak on this uh, repeatedly, lots of revisions back and forth to make sure that each one of the blobs was just right. All of the data on the roof of the cars was right and so forth. Um, then we also have the prototype paint scheme or the sort of the original concept. Uh, as the Acela was being marketed, 
Uh, believe it or not, its original name was actually the American Flyer. So, uh, oh, cool. yeah. So uh, I thought that was kind of a neat nod uh, to Lionel's uh, history. Yes. And so we've done one that's inspired by those early advertising posters uh, for the American Flyer train set. So this is a fantasy scheme in that it never existed on the rails, but one clearly based on on the prototype and early advertising. And uh, I actually think it's kind of neat with the the blue sweeping up over the top and yeah. the. And it'll be great too. Um, Brian mentioned the station sound on your car, but we will be doing basically a hundred percent dialogue, custom sounds and dialogue for the station sound diner car. Mm -hmm. So it won't sound quite like the ones that we use in our twenty-one inch and heavyweight cars. It will sound like you're at the Amtrak station, right? Mm -hmm. So it'll be uh, very customized. We're going to put a lot of effort into the audio. We're going to use a lot of the existing audio from the last run and also make some new stuff. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll take some of the clickety clacks out too, since. 120 miles an hour on stick rail is not uh, a good idea. Uh, I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Let's get into some of the fantasy schemes. Uh, we've got uh, New Haven and Milwaukee Road. What we tried to do here was obviously some Northeast Quarter inspired uh, paint schemes, but also some other quarters around the country. Like, for example, Milwaukee to Chicago would be a natural area that uh, could market for a, a good high-speed train to compete yeah. with with air service. That scheme just looks so cool. Yeah, and above all else, really it looks cool. So it really we does. went with it. Um, these these classic paint schemes. There's just something about them that no matter what you put them on, it yeah. sort of seems to work. And uh, so we have the the New Haven and the McGinnis. We have the Hiawatha for Milwaukee Road. We got a Union Pacific based on the M10,000, of course. And we've got a a Sella version of a, a Pensy Congressional. And then the Santa Fe war bonnet, uh, this, you know, maybe see in service in, uh, in the Southwest somewhere, Phoenix area, something like that. Uh, you know. I don't know if people like the war bonnet when you screen I know it never does well for us, but I keep trying. <laughs> and again, these are great options to have fancy paint on. And if you mm -hmm. don't like it, you just go out and buy it. Buy the real one. Right? All right. Okay, some more really cool legacy uh, scale sets uh, here in the catalog. We've got our nickel plate work train. Uh, this is the idea behind this was a, a complete section train. Uh, we broke it up into two pieces. So you get the initial set, which includes a legacy SW8, a flat car with a TMCC ballast tamper load. Operating. For operating. TMCC, mm -hmm. all the features. Yep. Uh, a 8,000 gallon tank car, one of our uh, sound equipped kitchen cars, and a bunk car. Uh, the kitchen car has, a, we did a release of these a few years back. It has uh, freight sounds in motion, and when parked, it gives you the, the uh, work camp at night with the, the crew coming for dinner. Cooking bacon. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to expand the train, there's an Adelin four-pack that includes another flat car with a TMCC speeder, uh, a flat car with a load, uh, engineering slash tool car, and another bunk car. So you can put together a full eight-car train here. Of course, you could also add these in with... Um, you know, a, an operating crane or uh, some additional flat cars and box cars with tools and uh, parts, maybe some ballast hoppers, gondola full of rail. Really uh, get to work on this set. Mm -hmm. So this is a really fun train with a lot of character uh, and, and, uh, and and some neat details to it and a lot of value with uh, the operating speeder and uh, and tamper that you can take off the, the flat cars and, and run around or put them on and have a really cool load. Yeah, for sure. We can talk more about the campers and speeders coming up. Yep, we have those available separate sale and some other road names coming up. Okay, two uh, great Pennsylvania passenger trains here. We've got the Asa Packer. This was one of the Lehigh Valley's first attempts at a uh, sort of streamlined operation. It was a, a very semi-streamlined uh, train. Uh, they, they added some extra panels to a locomotive uh, and refurbished and repainted a uh, four-car passenger train. Uh, these were done by the, the same designer that did the Milwaukee Roads Hiawathas, and he, he seemed to borrow from the orange and black look a lot. Yes. Uh, but it's really cool looking looking train. This very is not stylish. Another, right? Yeah, uh, and very popular on the on the Lehigh Valley too. Um, this one, the locomotive here, does have some extra panels added to the uh, USRA Pacific, including one on the uh, below the smoke box on the pilot uh, that fills in that space, uh, which will give it a really cool look. And I think a lot of people uh, enjoy this one. Uh, included in the four cars here is also a Station Sounds Diner. So you have that uh, in the train as well. And you've got the full prototypical four car train all in the, the lead set. Then for a more modern excursion, we have the New Hope and Ivyland. 
uh, excursion train with a GP30 and a really cool paint scheme on this. When we saw that one, we really wanted to do it. And since we had just tooled up the new 72 foot, 18 uh, inch passenger cars, uh, perfect companion to this. Uh, so we added four of those here in the set, the X Redding cars that are, are common on that line. Uh, and so you have a nice prototypical train that anyone who's familiar with the southeastern eastern Pennsylvania area uh, is probably familiar with the, the NH&I. And these, these cars, these new cars that we made turned out very nicely mm -hmm. too, um, very nicely detailed. All right, the 1926 Cardinals train. So this is a cool train, it has a neat little history on it. Uh, it, it, list, it lasted for two days. Uh, it made uh, basically one trip to, from New York to Chicago and back. Did it play baseball? No, no, different Cardinals. Yeah, uh, these 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 uh, Cardinals play for a higher power. Oh, the Church Cardinal. Yes, yes, yeah. for the Church. Mm -hmm. That kind of card. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're yeah. lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the New York Central uh, painted had a, had a full seven car passenger train painted up. Uh, they they used uh, two Pacific locomotives to, to pull it uh, from New York to Chicago. They were of course, glossed up, given some extra trim on the running boards and so forth. And then the full train of Pullman's was re repainted in Cardinal Red paint. Uh, the cars came from, most of the cars came from Pullman. The dining car came from the New York Central, so it retained its New York Central lettering. Uh, but that, that nice red, uh, Cardinal Red paint on these, I thought, looking at the history of the train, uh, it was a, it's a great story, uh, a neat chapter in railroading, and had to have been a very beautiful train uh, going down, down the track. So. I uh, wanted to add this into our, our lineup, and it, it seemed like a good fit this year with all the other Pacifics that we've been doing. Sure. Right, so four, car set in the, four cars in the set, two car add-on, plus a station sound diner to do the full prototypical seven-car train. You definitely have your mind set on sets when coming up with this catalog. There are quite a few, a few of them in here. Yes. And let's keep going with another one here for the Valley Flyer. We've been hitting the oh, East yeah. Coast a lot. I wanted to throw a nod out, out to California. Yeah. Uh, here we have the Santa Fe's Valley Flyer. This is um, the one that will go great with that 21010. If you, yeah, if you really wanted to go nuts, you know, get that 21010 on here and and pair them up. It would look really cool together. Uh, like the uh, Asa Packer, this Pacific has some extra details added to it to make it more like the Santa Fe's. And then we've got the matching four car uh, in the train, including the Station Sounds dining car. Uh, so you, you've got that, and then a two car set of coaches that could be added on as well. These were, uh, that, again, supposed to be originally a very short-term train, and then the, the cars lasted for a while until they got uh, sort of they got parsed back into regular service and then got repainted again. But a, a neat paint scheme and one that's long remembered. All right, the John Bull. I've seen some some uh, discussions of this one out there already. Yes. Uh, some, some people are interested in this, which makes me happy because this is one of my favorites uh, and is one of my short list for the, for the cataloging. I, I, I need to make more display shelves, Dave. I mean, honestly, I, there's a couple of reasons I even like it. The one on the flat cars is just awesome, and that's prototypical, isn't it, right? That is. Uh, when the Pennsylvania Railroad built their replica in 1939 for the World's Fair, uh, as well as then they also held on to CNA coach number three for a while, um, they would take the, their historic collection out from time to time for public display. Uh, if you were a town along the line and had a centennial event, you could uh, talk to the railroad, and they would send a few pieces out for display. And because of the... The, the nature of the John Bull, they didn't just take that up the track on its own. So the locomotive and tender were loaded on one 40-foot flat car and the coach on another, and they would ship them this way around to uh, different towns. And actually, when they were their, their last big shipment uh, to Strasbourg, they arrived on, on the flat cars there as well. One of the flat cars is still uh, in the museum's collection. So this is a, a cool prototypical way to display the train as it was in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. So if you're a, a Pensy guy who models the 40s through the 60s, this was a cool way to have this this set on your layout. You could have this at the front of your freight train going off to a public display somewhere, and then take the engine and, and uh, car off of there and, and run them around as their own uh, powered locomotive and, and train too. So you get the best of both worlds there. Uh, but we also wanted to do two uh, throwback schemes, one to the original Camden and Amboy. Uh, this time around, we did it with the brown, brown boiler uh, wood trim. The first release of this years and years ago had the green trim. I like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks nice to have that real wood effect. Mm -hmm. And then uh, because John Bull is the British equivalent to un our Uncle Sam, we thought, well, let's do an Uncle Sam. And that's the, the nice dark blue and red and gold uh, version you see there at the bottom of the page. And our inspiration for the art on that 
was the uh, America's Centennial in 1876. And we looked at a lot of uh, historic photos of the style of uh, bunting and flags uh, and decorations that were in vogue at that time uh, and decorated the, the train up as if it had been dolled up for the uh, American Centennial at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so a really sort of a neat and, and, uh, uh, and colorful but patriotic train that's uh, not too over the top, but, but a very classy looking uh, set. Uh, features on this, uh, the big thing is these are conventional only. Correct. There was just honestly no way to fit any kind of electronics in these other than just conventional control, mm -hmm. a single direction, and an operating headlight. Yes. Uh, when, when we say there's no room, there is no room. Correct. Uh, the motor for these is in tender. All right, actually. So uh, if we thought the, the 440s we did last year were tough, I mean, this is taking it to a whole nother level. Uh, but uh, the the Tender is mostly die cast, like most mostly die cast, with a lot of brass trim on there. Lots of very fine detail, mm -hmm. uh, very uh, delicate detail. Mm -hmm. Beautiful scale models, uh, and uh, whether you want to display them or, or run them, a uh, very nice piece. The draw bars, uh, draw bar couplers on these on all the cars, so that they they stay together reliably for you as well. Uh, no tiny little links and pins to try and, and put together on. Them. Okay, getting into some rolling stock. Go from the little John Bull up to this big ski train. Really good ski train. Uh, look for some more motive power to, to match this down the road, but one of the great things about the ski train is it ran for so many years uh, behind so many different locomotives. That you, there's a lot out there already that you can use to pull this train with. We've got the uh, power car up front with the sound generator sounds on board. Uh, there will be a station sounds diner, uh, two-pack with a dome car, and... Uh, uh, and then we have a, a four pack of cars as well, including the combine, a couple of coaches, and uh, observation car. Uh, this train ran from Denver up to the ski slopes uh, on weekends, uh, taking the skiers up there, dropped you right off on the slopes. You spent a, a day trying not to break your neck, uh, and then got back on the on the train and went back to Denver at the end of the day. So I'd love to ride the train. I would die if I went skiing. Yeah, I tried that last year. It did not go well. No. No, I, I definitely need friction under my feet. We're very good at being on the ground, aren't we, Ryan? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I was proving the, the, the theories of motion, uh, laws of motion, very, very quickly on there with a lot of mass getting in motion and not being able to stop. Yeah, so we'll stick to the train. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some more scale freight cars. Uh, we've got our vision box cars. Um, Dave, you want to talk a little bit, bit about these? Sure. So the Vision box cars are going to be based off of uh, the base of our Vision Line reefer cars that we've done a number of times now. And in the 2020 Big Book catalog, we did the Vision Line stock car even with the Quilling Cow. Mm -hmm. Well, the Vision Line box car is going to be similar to the Vision Line reefer in that you're going to have the sequences of loading, unloading, um, intermediate stops, things like that. But it's going to be for general freight that would be stored in the box cars mm -hmm. instead of produce and or cattle, basically. Yeah. So those electronics will all be TMCC legacy compatible. So you can um, activate all the sequences using your cab two or even cab one remote. And uh, it'd be very good for um, adding more play value to your train. Yeah. Most of the pain schemes here are based on um, LCL uh, services by the different railroads. So Cars that would often be getting loaded and then going from one town and then randomly to the next place and back and forth. Uh, so really, really neat. Uh, some really colorful paint schemes here too. Uh, I think the Pemsey is one of my favorites. It's a never was, but that was the original Lowy design for their uh, merchandise service box cars. And you just had to throw an SP in there. Of course, you need another one. <laughs> We've also got our 65 foot mill gondolas. This is fairly recent tooling, a nice modern large car uh, that does very well uh, with us. We've, we've got a bunch of paint schemes here that are all based off of uh, prototype cars of the same length and similar design, if not the exact same uh, date and builder, yeah. at least similar designs. I love that you did some that aren't just, you know, fresh from the paint shop schemes. Yes. You know, we, your, your Conrail really looks like a true Conrail car. Yeah. Beat up old Penn Central thing in, in <laughs> tie service. Recycled. I love it. <laughs> All right, uh, beer cars. It wouldn't be a Friday afternoon without some beer cars. Uh, we, these, these debuted last year. Uh, we've got a couple of new paint schemes, all prototypically based paint schemes on these. Uh, bright and colorful would pair great being switched around uh, by that core switcher, since that's where a lot of these were in service. 
Uh, for the Golden West and the BNSF, we have one in a clean paint scheme, and then we have one number that's got the graffiti on it with different graffiti on each side of the car, um, all based off of, of prototype uh, graffitis that we've seen and then uh, drawn up here by our, our artists. And, and Ryan is just sneaking into the factories at night with tiny spray cans and just going at it. The guy's really a hoodlum. Uh, we, these cars actually do pretty well for us. I think yeah. a lot of people like that. Uh, whether you like the look or not in the real world, I mean, I do miss the days of clean freight trains, but um, if you're modeling the modern era, it's it's what you see. So I can understand where, where there's a draw for it. Uh, we'll hit the next three spreads kind of quickly and all lump together because they, they do sort of go together. We've got our, our tool cars, our kitchen cars, and our bunk cars. Uh, again, fairly recent tooling. Uh, and these, you can get them individually or you can operate them as a set. Yep. Uh, one number each on the tool car and kitchen car, two numbers each on the, the bunk cars, since they usually ran those in multiples. Uh, we've got Canadian Pacific, CNJ, CNO, MKT, Norfolk and Western, and Western Pacific here. That's great. Um, and then uh, remember that the kitchen cars can come with the sound features that do operate either at stop or in motion automatically. Mm -hmm. So really neat, because this is a train that you could have sitting in your yard and have sounds and have some life coming out of it. Yeah. Uh, and then when you want to take it on the main line, it's, it's ready to go and you've got sound there too. And there's min-max switch so you can control how many clicking claps you get. And there's also a volume pot so you can turn it down if you think like it's just overpowering your layout. Mm -hmm. So really a lot of uh, customizable control with these, even though they're not TMCC control. All right, some standard O rolling stock. We brought these back a couple of years ago. Uh, we know that uh, the fully detailed and full cost models aren't for everybody, especially if you're trying to build long trains. So we've been rolling some of the older tooling back into the line uh, at a, a lower price point uh, with simple but still colorful and uh, usually prototype based paint schemes, as is the case here with the uh, double door 50 foot modern boxcars, uh, all in some short line uh, or regional railroads. Uh, when these cars came out in the late 1960s and 1970s, a lot of short lines bought these to cash in on their per diem car rates. And so you saw uh, colorful cars from all over the country just wandering around uh, wherever. And uh, sort of some really neat, made the freight trains a lot more colorful at the time. Uh, you still see these popping up now and then today. It'd be a real fun weathering project on one of these to modernize it. I think so. It'd really bring it more to life. It is a scale car, but a little lower on the details mm -hmm. to, to match the price point, but adding in some graffiti. And really step on up a notch from graffiti, you can do that too. But adding mm -hmm. graffiti or weathering can really step on up that realism up a notch, you know. That sounds like a workbench Wednesday project down. Oh, I can't wait for that one. <laughs> and we've also got some 40 foot gondolas here with ballast loads. These would be great additions to some of those work trains we've been talking about earlier as well. Yeah. And each of these is available in two road numbers each. Mm -hmm. All right. We've got uh, some speeders and tampers again. We talked with TC with the nickel plate set earlier on. Yeah. Uh, these speeders are TMCC controlled. Uh, there's plop them on the track, dial them up, and away they go. They've got the uh, the lights inside and the light on the roof. Uh, a variety of, of prototype inspired paint schemes here. There's some more fun ones back further in the catalog too. Right, right. Uh, and then our tamper is also a neat piece. We haven't run these in quite some time. Uh, pretty close to scale size on this one. Again, self propelled. It's got the little tamping uh, arms in the front that move up and down. Uh, these would be used to, to pack the ballast around the ties as they leveled and graded the right away uh, with track maintenance. So a neat little piece. And they have uh, interior figures, they're illuminated cabs, as well as mm -hmm. lights on the outside as well. Uh, just a lot of fun uh, addition to your layout without um, a lot of space. Yeah. All right, let's head into the traditional O-gauge world for a little bit here. There's some um, new stuff here, isn't there? there? It definitely is. Uh, we've got some uh, some great new features to talk about. Uh, we won't go through all the details because we've been through it a number of times before, but we do take some time here to explain in the catalog the features of the Bluetooth app, the universal remote, and then the differences between our basic Lion Chief, Lion Chief Plus, Lion Chief Plus 2.0, Legacy, uh, so that you have a sense of what the standard features are with each. And of course, again, voice control, and voice streaming. So many options. Mm -hmm. Starting with our new Lion Chief Plus 2.0 locomotives, we have our Baby K4s. Uh, this is, as the name implies, it's the sort of a, a Lion Master version of a full scale K4. Yes. Uh, lots of the same same level of detail and uh, 
an overall look, but shrunken down in proportion to make it uh, 031 curve friendly um, and, and still a nice value in, in the locomotive. So we've got four different uh, paint schemes here or variations. We've got one in the 1920s era striping. We've got the always debated, uh, did it exist red version of the K4. And it exists now. It exists now. Uh, actually, I, I stand firmly in the camp of it existed. Um, you may all now uh, debate on YouTube amongst yourselves. <laughs> the, uh, and of course, because it's mandated by the Pennsylvania State Charter, uh, we've done 1361 and 3750 as required with every run of a K4 ever. <laughs> Which we've done them once or twice. Mm -hmm. But the great thing about these uh, LC 2.0 engines is the new electronics that we came out with last year. Um, so you have not only Bluetooth control, but these are also controllable with TMCC. So you can use Cab 1, Cab 1L, or Cab 2 remote and uh, run these under TMCC uh, mode using Cab 2 remote. So you have full motor control, electrocoupler, um, stack smoke, as well as the lighting controls. And these also come with the five different quilling, or not quilling, I'm sorry, five different whistles and five different bells um now they all have different pitch levels right correct right all right and we've got some lc 2.0 diesels here as well we've got the rs3s and then back from the last catalog still showing again the gp7s yes. so uh, if you were familiar with our older lion chief plus locomotives you know uh, what these are like good uh actually pretty close to scale proportions on these as well actually, yes. on these two locomotives um and just enhanced now even further with the bluetooth and lc 2.0 features that dave just mentioned with the steam locomotives yeah. all right thomas still on the line i don't think we've got any new tom i in the in the <laughs> Uh, as, as we highlight here, we will start moving through some of the pages where we have some repeat things. Uh, we will uh, gloss over a little bit faster to keep things moving along. Uh, but let's stop here for a minute with Toy Story, uh, because this is the first where we can get in and talk about our new voice streaming and recording feature. DSR. So one thing that we are working on right now and have been working on for some time now is upgrading our Bluetooth. In 2017, we launched our Bluetooth products using BLE 4.0. And while BLP 4.0 is now um, being phased out in favor of BLE 5.0. So we're doing the same thing. And then moving to BLE 5.0, our electronics are going to have more um, ability to expand into what our products can do. So one of those new features that we're working on is VSR, which again, Ryan says, stands for voice streaming and recording. So using the Lion Chief app, when we come out with an upgrade later this year, you'll be able to either record your own voice into the phone and then push the button and it will play through the speaker on the engine. Or you can even upload a sound file on, uh, from your device and play that on the phone, uh, onto the engine. Mm -hmm. Or there's the live portion. So you will hold down the live button on the app and your voice will stream to the engine in real time as long as you hold down the button. Um, that way you can be your own conductor, have your own crew talk, your own power count, etc. Yeah. I'm gonna, you control the action. I'm going to try making it uh, sing like Bruce Springsteen. Uh -oh. Well, at first I need you to come over to my house later and make my VSR stop flashing 12 o'clock. Please, please take please take a note as we go through uh, the catalog here. You'll see some sets that are coming back into the line, and I want to I want to call this out because there are some recurring sets, like for example the Polar Express that year over year is always a one of our best sellers, and we want to make sure that they stay up to date with the latest in our controls. So things like the Toy Story set that you see here, you'll see note note there at the bottom that it has been upgraded and now includes this feature, and these sets will have a different product number. From the set offered the year before so for those of you who are out there looking at this right now and thinking oh well i might want to want to get this set but i really want the one with bsr make sure you pay attention to that uh, as the next round of, of shipments comes in there will be there will be a little bit of time where there may be both in the market um maybe you don't need the, the newer features and you like the the earlier price point better those are out there uh these will be coming in later this year as we get the new uh, boards in and the, the production rolling on them so so do notice that in the set and just because you look at the oh there's nothing new there's actually a lot of upgrades here in, in some of these pages for sure and 
And one thing, too, is that the VSR feature will not only be labeled on the packaging, but we will be putting the logo here that you see in the catalog. We'll be right on the bottom of the engine. This way you won't have to try and guess if it has that feature or not. You can turn the engine over, see that logo, and know the Bluetooth 5.0 and that new feature is included. Yes. All right. We've got some other new uh, Disney uh, Pixar uh, cars that can go great with uh, the locomotives and other rolling stock we released earlier. We've got the Cars um, uh, Aquarium car. Couldn't think of the name there. Cars Aquarium car. Aquarium car. And the, the Monsters, Inc. chasing gondola with some new figures on it running around. So there's some really, really cool stuff there. Uh, the Frozen set. This will be coming back again uh, this year and upgraded again with the next run with the voice streaming. Uh, this is a really neat one. Uh, the the light up coal load on this, uh, I think, is one of my favorite features. I thought that looked really. It's an ice load. Ice load, yes. Not, I mean, not a coal load. That's a glowing bunker of ice. What more can you say? I like. It. I mean, just you got to turn it on, let it glow, and let it go. There you go. Uh, for our John Deere fans this year, we've got uh, some. Some really cool new items here. We've got the uh, a new John Deere set, a little bit more of a modern version this time around with the GP38 diesel, uh, tank car, a flat car with two tractor loads on there, and the bay window caboose. Uh, so that's a, a neat one. We've got a, a really cool looking uh, vintage reefer as well. The idea we took from this one was sort of the billboard reefers in the 1920s. We went back to some older uh, advertising art and, and married the two, the two together. John and, Deere was actually pretty jazzed about that one too. Yeah, I think it's a it's a really neat looking car with some really great graphics on it, and then the uh, the John Deere Service Center as well uh, is, is a neat piece that also includes the the add on tractor. Yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. And anytime you can throw a diecast tractor onto a flat car, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, Harry Potter still on the line again with uh, voice streaming uh, coming in in here this year. A, another uh, new Halloween set. Uh, I like this one. Uh, some new designs uh, going in, into play uh, on our 080. Uh, lots of little neat details and things uh, on the decoration on these that you, you see as you look, look closer to it. Uh, I think it's the, the more you look at these, the, the neater they pop. And the printing that we do on the tenders and so forth is, is really cool. Wasn't that a prototypical Halloween shrine? Like, I'm sure. Wasn't so. it the wheel, Wheeling and Lake Erie? I, I suppose so. Yes. You win, Dave. Uh, we've got a, a box car in here with flashing LED lights, too, which is uh, Everybody very Everybody likes cool. flashy, blinky lights. Mm -hmm. And then uh, adding into that, we've got the, the Spooky Sounds uh, Halloween box car there. We've had some luck with our Christmas Sounds box cars over the years, so we went with the Halloween route, too. And this would pair nicely with any of our past Halloween sets or this new one. And these cars are great, too, because they don't run off track power. They actually run off a 9-volt battery. Mm -hmm. So you could just have it on display and don't actually have to have it on the track for it to play your songs. Mm -hmm. And some cool new bridges and water towers and flags. Lots of great accessories so you can expand your hollow, how, your hollow world. Hollow, Halloween world? Is that where you're going That's for? That's kind of where I was hollow going. Hollow world? Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, the spooks continue here. We've got... Uh, <laughs> We've got one of our Lion Chief 440 General Locomotives. Uh, again, great decoration on this. Yes. Uh, we've started releasing some of our Lion Chief locomotives that previously had only been done in sets. We're doing those in um, in separate sale versions now with the same set level features of a basic Lion Chief engine and a lower price point than our uh, Lion Chief Plus or Lion Chief Plus 2.0. Or Legacy. Or Legacy, of course, yes. But you still get some great sounds, great graphics, uh, the included remote control here. So you, you've got uh, a lot of a lot of fun play value on these. If you want to have a Halloween uh, engine but already have a layout and don't want to get a set, this is a great way to, to go that route and then add the, the separate sale rolling stock. Now, we've also got a, a Halloween speeder up there at the top, too, with all those same features that we that we talked about earlier. Uh, oil tanks and, and some more. Things. The Haunted House is, is making another run this year. Those did really well. And... That's a, one of our coolest accessories, Very I think. popular accessory, mm -hmm. especially with the different color lights, the fresh sound set and everything. It's, it's very fun. Mm -hmm. And that witch down there looks like Sadie. You ever notice that? No comment. <laughs> I probably shouldn't uh, taunt the producer while we're still on the air. Uh, you're within throwing distance, so... <clears throat> 
All right, we've got our space adventure set next up um, in the line. Whoa, this is out of this world. This really is. This is a, a pretty cool one, um, inspired by some of uh, NASA's prototype uh, trains that, that were used uh, around uh, their bases uh, with a little bit of, of fun and adventure and whimsy thrown in there uh, to boot. Uh, this, of course, will have all the new features we've been talking about, Dave. Uh, we've got the tank car, the different uh, carrier cars, mm -hmm. box car, the add-on uh, capsule uh, car is, is cool. And uh, I think we're, you know, it's, it's kind of neat and timely that we do this. We're in this new era of space again, and it's it's been exciting. It was one of the, one of the few bright spots of last year was was seeing the space launches and things like that. I don't know. I, I enjoyed that a lot. I thought and with VSR, you can come up with your own audio dialogue. Mm -hmm. you know, three, two, one, liftoff. Yeah. Or Houston, we have a problem. We don't have enough trains. Sticking with the out of this world theme, uh, we've got a few new additions in our Area 51 line of accessories uh, to go with our, our set. Uh, this set delivered late last year, but it's one of the, it's one of the cool ones with the light up track in there uh, to give it some some extra glow. And one of our newer Tier Four engines. Mm -hmm. Another another one, our, our Star Trek series, some new additions in here for rolling stock and uh, speeder as well. Uh, this set, uh, really cool sounds and dialogues in this one. Uh, the lenticular uh, holodeck car, very cool feature. Uh, and now we've got the additional, the lithium crystals hopper, the chasing gondola with Q and uh, Picard and Riker, and the sort of the shuttlecraft inspired TMCC speeder. That's my favorite. I think that's pretty cool. I think with these sets, this is really going to help you live long and cheer cheer. The, the, the jokes aren't going to get any better as we do this longer, guys. I, I hate to disappoint you. That, I don't know if I do that. That was amazing. <laughs> We've got uh, two new um, cars in our Captain series as well for Voyager and Deep Space Nine. So if you've been collecting those, some great graphics on all of these cars. Oh, and I'm definitely up to treble. You, you are up to treble. Always up to treble. Uh, some additional uh, accessories to go with our Anheuser-Busch trains. These are still available. Uh, I really like the, uh, the separate sale car that we did in the Mint car. It's probably the closest thing I've found yet, uh, you know, the prototype for that car, the display car. It's probably the closest thing i found in the real world yet that actually looks similar to our Mint car. So I thought it's that was pretty neat. We, we were able to actually find that. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> And some additional um, reefers here as well for those who've been collecting the Billboard Reefer series. Uh, this has been a, a fun license for us and one that I think we'll, we'll still see some continued uh, growth and, and fun with. Oh, for sure. All right, two more new sets. The Chesapeake and Ohio Freight set was debuted in C2. That'll uh, be delivering this year, so we, we brought her back around again. Uh, and also a great Kansas City Southern modern set uh, with a tier four and the modern freight cars in the great Southern Bell paint scheme. Uh, this one should be really popular. I think it's a, I think that's one of the most beautiful paint schemes out there on the rails today, personally. And just one thing to notice here in the catalog, the KCS set does have VSR, as you can see the logo there. Mm -hmm. um, and since we cataloged the CNO set last year, it will not have VSR. So just notice how we placed the logo with the set where it actually applies. Mm -hmm. Adding on to the 120 set that we started last year, uh, we've got a, a, another uh, flat car here with a, a hand car added. Uh, this is sort of like some of the other things we've looked at here. We've got a, a cool looking flat car load, but then it pops off and becomes its own uh, conventionally operated uh, hand car. So you get two for the price of one uh, here. Be a neat addition to our, our Lionel line sets or any of our, I mean, we've, we've done a few Lionel lines things over the years. I think probably add that into, one a, or two. into a nice looking post war layout. Mm -hmm. The Super Chief, we've got a few of our active train sets coming up here that you see catalog after catalog. Uh, but we want to, you know, again, point out that uh, these will be, uh, as, as time goes on and we reorder, you'll see these stay in the line and also see upgraded features as well. So a few more that are, that are still here. Just so we can keep this program under a week, we're going to skip ahead. Uh, two people, more. The people. Oh, I know. I, I'm, I'm already I tired. Mean, I think of, they're getting tired of your jokes. Well, they're getting tired. Uh, two more of our separate sale Lion Chief Generals. One, as of all things, the General, uh, and another one based on the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad's locomotives. Some different stacks here. Uh, 
nice deco. Uh, some, some great work on these. They'll be very, very well received, I'm sure. And still some of the 080s uh, in the lineup. Great value in these engines. Okay. And to point out the separate sale again, do have the new VSR uh, yes. feature in them. And uh, Brian, I really like that Pennsylvania paint scheme. That, that really is sharp. I do. I, I think that turned out really well on the, the scale hybrids we did last year. Yes. And it was a natural to include it on one of the traditional lines as well. For the diesels, we have uh, four new U36Bs uh, in the lineup here as well. Uh, again, standard Lion Chief features, our new VSR uh, and uh, LVC on board these, uh, Santa Fe, UP, Seaboard, and CSX. So some nice different color schemes there. Mm -hmm. And still a few of the GP38s available as well. Okay. Like okay. All right. This one's really cool. We did this this car in American Flyer a few years ago, and I'm glad we, we got it into the line in, in O-Gage. The, the Roadrunner uh, and Wiley Coyote chasing um, uh, aquarium car. Really cool piece. I, I like this one a lot. And when you're done, an anvil falls on it. <laughs> Some great new additions in the Batman line, too, here as well. Uh, another fun aquarium car um, that we've added into the lineup. And what railroad shouldn't have the bat signal uh, on the searchlight tower uh, on there someplace? All of them, sure. Mm -hmm. Continuing with our, our Ford and Chevy license, this is where Dave and I can, can duel it out a little bit. Uh, one of us is Team Oval, and one of us is Team Better, and I won't say who's, who's who on that. Um, but we've got... to go around and around and wear a bow tie. <laughs> uh, we've got a, uh, a couple of uh, cool box cars here. These have two-sided art, so different graphics on each side, and then uh, a couple of service centers as well. Uh, I think I can guess which one of those probably got seen more more business. I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, the very very cool, very cool graphics on these overall. I, we, we can get each other, but I think both of them actually turned out really nice. Right, and at least out of all the American makers, we picked the best two. <laughs> we really, That's true. we really dodged a bullet there. <laughs> We won't get any hate mail at all. <laughs> not, not that Sorry. we have it. <laughs> uh, our, our Made in USA series of cars, um, continuing with a couple of, of series that we've done for a few years now, our uh, Railroad Heritage. We've got two really, really nice ones this year. Of course, Amtrak is turning 50 years old already. That's kind of hard to believe. Uh, but I know they're, they're planning some, some special stuff, which is exciting. And I really like the way the art turned out on this one. Uh, just a sort of a beginning to end in, in paint schemes. And there's there's actually a lot of little details that, that pop out in that car when you see it up close. And then uh, also a big uh, anniversary for the Erie Railroad this year. Another one of your Halloween lines, uh, Dave. Uh, and some really cool cool art and, and features there. Yes. Uh, the Erie feelings just think about it. Mm -hmm. Angela Trotta's back with uh, two new box cars here. In addition to a lot of cars we've done with her are very Christmas themed. Uh, but Megan and Angela have been working this year on some new art that's really designed specifically around the, the size to fit one of these boxcars and some of the classic Lionel locomotives. So, yeah, these, these do have a great look to them. So you've got the Hudson and the uh, Santa Fe F3s there. I mean, it's kind of hard to pick two more iconic Lionel locomotives to start off with than those. Uh, but definitely some more planned in this series too. So if you if you like the look of that and you like to, to collect these types of cars, uh, get yourself started now with, with these two, uh, and there will definitely be more to come. Um, Angel is such a good artist too. She does yeah. such a wonderful job. Yeah, I don't know how she does it, uh, but she does. She makes it look easy. Well, she doesn't have to work with us first. <sighs> That's for sure. Uh, and then as well, we've got some new cars in the Battlefield of Honor series, continuing that that long running series of uh, military themed. Uh, rolling stock, uh, all printed and assembled here in the U.S. Uh, three new cars in the Wings of An Angels um, pinup series, as well as a couple of new cars for Miller Cores as well uh, that we've got in that license. And again, going back to some of the traditional art and uh, billboard reefers. So some, some really neat varieties. I, I think these are nice. The beer cars are always popular, and when you can marry some of the, the older advertising art with the with that style car, I think it turns into a, a neat piece. Now let's get presidential. Let's get presidential. Uh, we've got a couple of, of new presidents here in the line uh, this year. Uh, I 
going to have to get closer to the screen because I'm as old as some of these presidents. We have, we've got Lyndon Johnson, uh, Chester Arthur, and Franklin Pierce uh, made the, the list this year. Um, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting old. Wow. You said you couldn't believe that Amtrak is 50. Well, come on. You're getting there. <laughs> so this is, series has been going on for quite uh, quite a few years now. You can see all that we've offered so far. Uh, we will continue to go until we've, we've gotten them all. Um, but uh, well, Hopefully we don't run out. Hopefully, yes. I, we're catching up. <laughs> we are catching up. Some more uh, value priced traditional rolling stock um, in the line. The shark fin car. Uh, this is a cool one that when we, we tried to offer the set a couple of years ago and we just couldn't get enough orders for the set to make it happen. But we had a, a lot of requests to do the shark containment car with the, the shark fin that swims back and forth on the roof. It's based on our walking brakeman car. Uh, and I think it's just a really creative car and a really fun feature. So uh, it for, would look really good too behind that turbine. It would, yeah, or or just about anything. I mean, I think it's just a neat car. This is one. Of, there's some things that you just you just have to accept are fun, and this one fits into that fun category. Like me, you have to accept that I'm mm -hmm. fun. Our personalized program. Uh, this has been going on for a number of years. Uh, we won't get too in depth on it, but it's uh, a great thing that we offer in house here, where you go on to lionel.com, upload your photo, upload your own text, uh, and then these are printed right onto the car and shipped out to you. Uh, in a few weeks' time, uh, and so they're great for birthdays and anniversaries and holidays, uh, or just you know thank you gift or you need birth announcements, uh, even one up there for your favorite dog and cat. So I know some people who could probably use like seventeen of those cat cars. <laughs> Sherry, <laughs> it's a time to talk about Christmas already. Is it safe to talk about about Christmas in January? Didn't we just get through it? I mean, didn't we just enjoy it? We just enjoyed this, but. But let's hit let's hit some Christmas uh, again and, uh, and and think think forward to, to good times at the end of the year. Yeah, let's deck the halls. Mm -hmm. We've got some new offerings in the scale side of the Polar Express. We've got what uh, we sort of called the in-house. We've been calling it the Polar Vortex, <laughs> our uh, our high-speed version. This is for when Santa is like um, running late. Some of us and forgets yeah. uh, about Christmas until Christmas Eve and has to run late and, and pick up some things. Uh, this is, this is what he needs. Yep. Yeah. Uh, then we've got the, uh, in our ongoing line of freight cars, we've got the flat car with the bell load this year. And uh, two new Pullman cars. These are done up as Pullman cars with uh, the train, the car names underneath uh, North Pole and uh, what was the other one we did? Believe uh, were the two uh, sleeping cars that we did here. So another cool, fun addition. These are available in both the black roof and the snow roof varieties, depending on which of the Polar Express trains you've been building over the years. And so. we will definitely have a lot of fun sounds um, in the uh, high speed train version of the Polar Express, um, including both the engine and in the station sound. For the traditional uh, Polar Express folks, we've got a freight set in the line this year. Uh, it's been a few years since we've done a Polar Express freight train uh, in the traditional line. Uh, this one's a little bit different uh, than the, the past versions uh, with the, the three dome tank car and the box car and the caboose. You also get included in here a set of billboards and a bridge. So some extra value included in the set as well. Yeah, there's a lot of fun in this set, isn't there? Mm -hmm. uh, and both of these sets is the, of course, the new freight set and the return of the Classic set will be coming with voice streaming feature and recording this this year as well. Some more new Polar Express items. We've got a Polar Express speeder, the hot chocolate tank, uh, some new billboards, a flat car with bridge load, uh, and that's cool because you can actually then build the bridge. Uh, another one of our, our two-sided cars uh, with the movie scenes printed uh, there. The present loading shed, this is based on the, the old ice house, which is kind of neat. We, uh, Megan came up with the idea of reskinning this as a, a present distribution center, and uh, you can load Shoot. the presidents in there. Yep. And then the uh, we've got the uh, operating present car as well. So uh, you load the cars up, and then when you open the door, this will, will kick out the, the presents, uh, like our merchandise box car. So neat, two neat uh, accessories to add into your Polar Express line. Yep, just make sure you get the, the uh, separate sale remote control track that activates the box Yep, either the new fast track one or the old, it will also work on the old uh, tubular uh, track as well. Of course, the, 
the line of uh, add-on passenger cars for the Polar Express, still there, still popular, uh, and some other cars still from uh, previous years as well if you want to expand on the Polar Express world, uh, as well as uh, stations, buildings, houses, accessories. Oh, my. Uh, there are, there, I've seen some really cool, complete Polar Express uh, layouts yes. that have been done, uh, including the one that uh, our, our friends at the LCCA did uh, this year uh, in Dallas, a really neat, uh, neat event. All right, heading from uh, from the blue and purple into green and uh, green and red for Christmas, we start off with some uh, new Disney items. Uh, we've got the uh, present car up there uh, with with gifts inside, and another one of the the bridge cars. A really cool cool piece there to continue to expand on the Disney Christmas set. This is a set that came last year, um, and want well, I just talk about it again. Uh, delivered later last year. Real fun set with uh, lots of Christmas lights and music uh, on board. Uh, one of these boxcars, both boxcars are illuminated. One also plays sounds, and the lights actually flash in time with the, time with the music, the which is pretty cool. And uh, we also have the, the lights in the caboose as well. Yes, there's a, a color wheel uh, on the caboose light, so you get different colors coming out of the out of the caboose all the time. It's a really, really neat piece. And even though we cataloged this one last year, this one here is the new SKU number that doesn't include the DSR feature. Mm -hmm. And then up there at the top, you've got that separate set. Yep, you can add on another uh, blinking box car if, you, if you'd like for the set, or just have one standalone. And then this can. set would look really great, too, on our illuminated fast track. It really would. If you if you really like the, the lights, you can get the separate sale fast track and add it in there. And we have some, some fast track sets uh, out there as well. Uh, Winter Wonderland, sort of our evergreen uh, Christmas set, uh, still here. Just mentioned the lighted track. Here we go on the uh, North Pole Central, a real fun uh, fun set that you, you can run. And here again, as the, as the train goes over the track, the track illuminates. This works with any train, and you can interchange it with standard fast track. There's no extra wires or plugs to hook up. It's all run off of track power and all activated by the train itself on the track. So no hookup or hard work required. If you can snap together two pieces of fast track, you can put together one of your fast track and, and have an illuminated layout. Yeah, and for now we have straights and the 036 curves available. Um, but depending on how well these keep doing, we're open to additional size curves in the future, right, Ryan? Yeah, I, I see an 072Y command control switch for sure. I sense sarcasm. Your senses are well tuned. We've got a um, uh, another Christmas version of the Lion Chief uh, 440 as well. Uh, these always do well and are very nice You're setting up a Christmas layout. Uh, or if you have a regular layout and just want a little bit of uh, Christmas flair in there, uh, these are these are neat pieces. And the deco on that one looks really sharp. Okay, this is one of my favorite new accessories. Yeah, and there's a lot of work going into this one too, and mm -hmm. even new tooling. Why don't you, since you've, you've doing a whole lot of work on this, Dave, I'm gonna let you talk about it, even though it was my idea. Well, see, Ryan, that's that's the great thing within our relationship. You come up with the ideas, and I do all the work. I agree. <laughs> Boy, I just threw myself under the bus on that one, didn't I? So everybody knows or has seen our Lionel Hobby Shop with these three operating layouts inside of them. Uh, we, we brought that back a couple of years ago, and we thought, hey, let's try to make a smaller version. So the small round layout that you see in the regular hobby shop, we've taken that and we're adopting it to the smaller building. So it will be front and center in that building, right inside the window, and you'll see the train going around. So we're tooling it on the gear box just to operate that layout, as well as a base that uh, um, houses both that layout and the mechanism, plus the building. And this will be in PEP, so you'll be able to plug this into the plug expand play um, track sections or even the separate ones that you can plug into your accessory transformer. Yeah, and then standing outside the shop, we have some new figures tooled up. Yes. Uh, so you've got some children looking in, and I think that's what makes this piece so special and, and, and why we partnered with Angela on, on it as well, because she's done some great art around this idea. But I think so many of us uh, can identify with that childhood wonder of looking in through the window, especially when you see, this is part of Lionel's history too, with the old hardware store displays or department store displays, yes. looking in there and seeing the trains running around and, and how many people were inspired by that uh, to get into this hobby. 
And so that's just a really cool piece and a nice sentimental piece. And I think this is going to bring it to, to life uh, in a new way and uh, should be a really and definitely nice say, uh, an operating hobby store on mm -hmm. a smaller layout with mm -hmm. a smaller footprint compared to our normal hobby shop. Okay. Also, a few other new uh, pieces of, of Angela Trotta rolling stock there as well, including the caboose uh, up there uh, in, the, in the upper corner. And, and all the art that we do on those, of course, she does, again, custom for these pieces so that they, they fit right. All right, so more Christmas rolling stock. Uh, a lot of operating uh, stock this year, too. Uh, we've got our annual Christmas car. We've got our annual Christmas music car. This has become an annual event now with new sounds each time, which is, which is pretty neat. Uh, the, the candy cane carrier, the, the Christmas dump car, uh, and the and then this is a neat one too, the, the light up Christmas tree uh, flat car. Uh, years and years ago, we did a, a car with um, casks on there, radiation casks or something like that with a nuclear power plant accessory. And uh, this is a, a, you know, we went from radioactive materials to Christmas trees. I think that's a step in the right direction. <laughs> uh, but well, these will clean yeah, uh, light up Christmas trees. These will be uh, new molds that will sit there on the on the powered rails and, and, and light up as you go around. Uh, and then another one of our hand cars on a flat car uh, cars uh, with uh, this time with uh, the snowman and Santa uh, on the hand car for a Christmas thing. Pretty neat. Some uh, some more great new accessories. We've got a, um, a traditional Christmas version of the present loading uh, station uh, with our, our sled X uh, express service one of your really fantastic funds no that one that one's all trip I gotta give oh, credit to trip on that that that's but I do like it I think it, it did a nice job it's so bad but it's good mm -hmm. and, and that's yep. why I thought you came up with it yeah <laughs> and then we've got the, the operating merchandise box car there as well uh, we've got the uh, the house with Santa on the roof. Uh, hopefully, might, might make some tooling and design changes in that one uh, over the coming year. Uh, the Santa Watch Tower, uh, which is neat, uh, and then the um, the log cabin too. Can we talk a little bit about that because that's when we put some sounds and things in there. Yeah, and we did that a lot of it last year, right? But um, this one will have illuminated light, but also a red flickering light inside to simulate the fireplace. And the light will be in sync with the sounds that is also included in this accessory. Um, so you'll have the, the sound effect of a crackling fireplace that goes along with that LED, as well as other log cabin-ish esque type sounds. Mm -hmm. So this is a good um, accessory building that you can use with your PDP and on your layout that adds a little bit of sound and light animation and fun. Yep. And uh, if you've got a smoking accessory somewhere on the lab, you can get some of the new log cabin scent uh, that we'll be doing uh, this year for our smoke scents. Uh, also down there, we've got some uh, new figures as well for Christmas. These will be the same figures, uh, some of the same figures will be used on the uh, window display as well, but we'll also have those available separate sale uh, if you want to position them around town. Okay, and some more classic Christmas uh, still in the line here, some great operating accessories and so forth. Uh, the covered bridge, which uh, still has those lighted uh, Christmas tree lights around, around the top, too. They don't always show up as well uh, in the catalog, especially on a small computer screen. But, uh, <laughs> they're, reflection. <laughs> <laughs> but they're there. Okay, and then we get into some more accessories uh, outside of the, the world of Christmas. Uh, some, some neat things here. We've got our return of our classic searchlight tower, a uh, Lionel towing, Cohen's towing version of the garage, which we looked at a little, little earlier. Uh, we've got some some more oil tanks, uh, including the Lionel Ale uh, tank, which is which is neat. And then yeah, and the T Rex, was, which is a fun uh, a fun graphic we've done on a few tank cars uh, over the years. The station, though, let's talk a little bit about the station because you did some, some some cool things with with this too. Yes, this is uh, another operating accessory that we're um, incorporating sound effects into. So it, this one is based off the technology we developed for the. Bump and go trolley station stop uh, section of fast track. This one will have three customizable recording slots where you can use the button and record your own voice into that. And then what will happen is every time a train goes over the section of track that is near the station, um, the speaker inside the electronics will play that sound that you recorded onto that channel. And then every time that it goes by, it'll play the next, you know, the first one will play it, then the next one will play the next time the train goes through, and et cetera, and then loop back into the first one. So it's um, kind of a fun accessory that you can add 
sounds too when the train passes by that doesn't require a lot of wiring and other customized things that you have to do to your layout. It kind of comes out of the box and with a little easy setup with some fast track and you're off to go after you record your voice. It's a neat piece. Yes. So it's, it's sort of the non-Bluetooth, but the, the, the accessory equivalent of our new uh, voice recording for the, for the app. Correct. All right, and we've got some great, uh, some great buildings, some some wonderful puns in here and in our building collection. The fireworks, uh, we don't have a sample of that quite yet, but once we get a sample of that, that one's going to be fun. We've just approved the design changes on that. There's been a lot of work gone into that mm -hmm. one as well, especially with the fiber optic selection, as mm -hmm. well as the uh, smoke unit will be the same design that we um, were putting into our burning house, and this one will also incorporate sounds that will go along with the fiber optic lighting. That way you'll have the sound go with the exploding fireworks. I'm excited for that one. Me too. And some additional accessories, again, carried forward from, from before. Uh, some of these are in very short supply, so definitely want to see your dealers uh, if you're interested in any of these accessories Especially that are making comebacks. Those ones are very popular. Yes, yes. A couple of, of new uh, kits planned in the house line as well. Uh, we've been doing some some kit building on our Workbench Wednesday program on Wednesday evenings. I invite you all to see that on uh, on Facebook every other Wednesday at seven o'clock. Uh, we've been building some houses and, and talking about that. The kits have done very well for us. Um, actually, but I was surprised we weren't sure if people would like building kits or buying them ready made, and uh, the kits seem to sell outsell the, the ready made ones. So yeah, I think people really love to do some of this kind mm -hmm. of stuff themselves, especially when you're stuck in the house for a while on Wednesdays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a, a few uh, more of our, our ready-made houses uh, in here also. All right. I'm trying to think, Dave, if there's anything more that's uh, that's new and exciting before we get into uh, the, the track section. And I think we've we've covered a lot of the basics uh, here at this point. Um, of course, we we still have our full line of fast track and our loaded up on stock. Uh, we have our conventional uh, and and. Power supplies and, and legacy is still available. And one exciting thing is the uh, 153IR will be coming back soon. Yes, we just saw the prototype for that on your uh, engineering table. Yeah, and that's approved and uh, about to start production. It's been a few years since we had those, and it'd be nice to get them back out there for people mm -hmm. to activate their accessories. Yeah, so, so while we're looking at the at the legacy page, you know, I, I want to sort of reassure people as we spent a lot of time at the beginning of this program talking about voice control and Bluetooth and all of these wonderful new things that we've been adding into the line, we still remain fully committed to a backwards compatible program. While we continue to innovate all across the line from our, our starter sets through our highest end uh, locomotives, we also want to make sure that uh, you don't end up with paperweights three years from now uh, and, and continue to, to make this accessible to everybody. So there's still a, uh, there's still a lot of development going on on the legacy front and you'll be seeing some exciting things on that down the road, but and that is even starting last year. All the engines got refreshed legacy electronics. Mm -hmm. So um, while Bluetooth has certainly been a focus of development the past few years, legacy has certainly not fallen to the backseat position. So and and even to the point now where we've married legacy and Bluetooth together um, to give people more options and simply not going away anytime soon. But that's probably as much as we can say without having our wrists smacked. So I think we, we did it, Dave. I think we did it in under two hours, which is, is it pretty good for us. I feel like it's only been a few minutes with you, my best friend. I know. Well, it, it, I, it's my witty and charming persona. So now we will be doing the flyer catalog a different day. Yes. Uh, for those who are uh, looking for American Flyer, it's Flyer's 75th anniversary. So we have some some fun uh, things planned in there, uh, in the great anniversary catalog. If you've got the um, the current catalog in print, you just turn the book over, and you've got American Flyer on the backside. Uh, so we're trying. To, we would we would have done Flyer today, uh, but we haven't figured out how to rotate the cameras yet so that the catalog wouldn't be upside down. Plus, well, after an hour and forty minutes, you guys are probably. Yes, so we will focus on Flyer and give it its own own show and its own uh, its own attention as it deserves. Right. Uh, also, you'll see throughout the upcoming year, of course, uh, more new, fun, and exciting things in our other product lines, including the HO World and uh, 
ready to play and uh, special announcements as well. We've got a, a special uh, locomotive being cooked up right now for announcement in the not too distant future. So um, keep yourselves peeled to our channels and, uh, and, and look for updates. If you have questions, of course, I've seen some things popping up on the screen all along as we've gone. So uh, we'll be reaching out uh, and, and responding if we, if we can and directly to you or look for responses um, in social media and uh, hang in there with us. And if you've got uh, anything that's hot on your wish list, don't forget to get to your favorite Lionel dealer and place your order. Most of the items, uh, especially in the scale section, are build to order. Even those that aren't specifically listed as build to order, we usually base what we order off of the number of orders that we get. So uh, it's it's nice for us to try and be able to judge uh, what the demand is by, by what you want. So make sure you're not disappointed and see your dealers and place your orders. Uh, we'll be taking dealer orders towards the end of February. So you've got a little bit of time. No need to, to rush, take your time, look through the whole catalog, uh, give it some, some nights to think about it. But, uh, but definitely see your dealers and place your orders and we'll be getting to work on these to deliver them to you by the end of the year. That's terrible advice, Ryan. Get jazzed, look at the catalog and go order the stuff now. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> on that note, thank you all for joining in and sticking with us over these couple of uh, hours of looking through the catalog. We will be back again uh, sometime when they let us. Not sure when that is. We've probably exhausted our goodwill with management being in the same building at the same time for, for this long. Uh, but we will we'll ransack the building again and, and get together and do this one more time. They can't stop us. Until then, everybody, please stay safe and well and enjoy your trains, and we'll see you up the road. Bye, guys.